All right, we're live. <clears throat> yeah, so speaking of SIGGRAPH, SIGGRAPH, I don't know how to say it. I, I think that's correct, SIGGRAPH. I think it depends on where you're located. Okay. So if you're that? located in, is it Vermont? Vermont, I, I, Vermonters absolutely say SIGGRAPH. I've asked many Vermonters and uh, it's, oh. it's, it's unanimous. That's the Vermont SIGGRAPH accent. Uh, accent. You know who else? Uh, you know who else is going to be there? Is uh, besides you two and me, all three of us will be there. But this guy <laughs> on the screen, he'll be there. Jensen's going to give a, a keynote. Man, you know I've got a leather jacket. Do you think I should bring it? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I don't even need to wait for the rest of that sentence. Yes, you should. And now all you're right. going to make me want to get one. Don't tell Jen because she will go out and buy one. Just like let me see. Did she get the sign? Well, I'm at my dad's. You're uh, going to have to wait till next week what to a see. Tease. Okay. <sighs> Next week I'm out of the office. So are we? Are you? Are you two going to hold this live stream without me? I no, we actually have a a fun live stream where I'm going to be doing some really cool things. Okay, okay, I like you're, it. So you're so Jen, you're on two live streams next week, right? Oh, am I? Oh man, the, the Damien one, right? The kit. Am I? Oh, that's um, uh, yeah, that's right. Wednesday. That's the the, <laughs> the building an app. Yeah. What what's what's the what's this other one? Oh, sorry. So I didn't know if you were doing uh, this time time slot also, or you, are you just going to do the Wednesday slot? Probably just the Wednesday slot. Oh, I can't okay. I can't take over Eric's amazing work with his his robot. I have yet to have gotten <laughs> my robot yet, so I probably won't get mine until after uh, SIGGRAPH. So um, I'm, I'm a right. little bit behind. I, I won't be able to keep up, but you know. Well, everybody here is all hands on deck for SIGGRAPH. It's August 6th through 10th. Uh, on the screen, we have a really nice uh, overview prepared by our colleague Greer. Um, uh, OpenUSD is going to be a big day there of 9 to 5 uh, on, uh, I think it's on uh, it's on uh, Tuesday, I believe, right? Is OpenUSD a day on Tuesday? I believe it is. Um, we're going to have, uh, NVIDIA will be there in full force. Uh, like I said earlier, the three of us will be there, but, uh, our different, um, papers, from all, people from all over the team will be there. Um, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. There's actually going to be a little, uh, little get together before the keynote. So get in touch with one of us. If you're interested in, in hanging out you're in the LA area or attending Seagraph, I'll post a link in a few minutes to our calendar request. So you guys can request a meeting with us if you're going to be there. Uh, we also have a great forum post that's going to go up, I think, later today with all these details. So if you can't see everything on the screen, um, this is not even everything that's happening with NVIDIA Seagraph. It's just a few things. Um, but we also obviously have um, a nice keynote by Jensen on August 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific. That's going to be great. You don't need to be there to watch it. You can just tune in live. Um, and then obviously we have this great USD series, speaking of open USD, with Aaron Luck, um, which has a few videos there now. As a YouTube playlist, I'll put that in the chat in a few minutes. Um, and then I think everybody already knows that we are in the midst of the start to finish campaign. So if you have something that you would like to show off that uh, you can share the beginnings of it and the end, we would love to see uh, see your workflow and what apps you used. Uh, bonus points if it's open USD, um, but it doesn't really matter. We want to see, just want to see the creative process of the different apps you're using. Uh, and you can tag start to finish on your social media. And if it involves anything with Fabric, hopefully that you're using Marvelous Designer because we have a great Omniverse connector there. Um, you can uh, watch the live stream. I'll post a link in a little while from a few weeks ago where we showed off the workflow on using Marvelous Designer. Um, but I think the big topic of the day, obviously, is the um, uh, Seagraph keynote. So we want everyone to put on your calendar August 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 888. It's going to go down in history. Uh, we have a lot of people on the team working right now on polishing up um, all the materials for that presentation. I think it's going to blow people away. Speaking of which, yesterday we had a live stream with the Convey team. I don't know if either one of you caught this, but mm. we showed off uh, the Convey is using uh, um, um, their technology with NVIDIA's technology. Uh, and there's an Omniverse extension, which allows you to converse with AI in real time. So they're using it for uh, converting, uh, conversing with NPCs in like a game environment. You could talk and ask questions, and that blew me away. Two things blew me away about this thing. I'll post a link in a minute for yesterday's live stream. But first thing is how quick the response was. Uh, pretty amazing. It was nearly instant, so very conversational. Uh, and the second thing that blew me away is how quickly you can uh, customize um, the the character you're talking to as the designer. 
um, and their, their, their user interface for, for their platform is brilliant, really nicely organized. So I highly recommend anyone who's interested in that kind of tech, go to convey.com, C-O-N-V-A-I.com, and you can check out this free trial, um, and there's now an universe extension. So we're going we're gonna to do follow-up live stream with them. But um, let's talk about uh, what we're doing today, what you guys are doing today. I will, so <clears throat> moving forward on the robot. Well, I've got to start by admitting a critical mistake I made. Oh, here we go. I left the car on. And so, so now the battery's dead. And so um, last time we were talking about, you know, I was showing off the Jupyter Notebook on the Jetson. Let me show, let me share that screen here real quick. So here's the actual Jetson. Here we go. Here's a Jupyter Notebook. And we can run it right on the Jetson. Man, I wish I could. I wonder if I can zoom in on that a bit, huh? There we go. That's better. Let's go a little bit bigger. Would it be easier for you to look at it from StreamYard? Yeah, if the if the text is big enough. I just couldn't really read it. There, that's better now. <clears throat> yeah, and so I've got this Jupyter notebook. It's almost the same as the one that I had on my computer. All I did was I just secure FTP it over to the Jetson, put the files in the right place, and, and then it runs. Made a few tweaks, so I don't need to roll back. But um, essentially, the, we, get, we can run these Jupyter Notebooks in either location. They can run the real car or the digital car. And I, and I had it working in theory last week, but it wasn't actually steering the car servos. And we got that. I got that working with the help of uh, some of the Isaac Sim team, who know are a little bit better at robotics than I am. But basically, what I learned, I just had to learn a little bit about. I mean, I learned how to debug. In the end, I had it wired right, but I, I didn't know I did. But basically, I learned that um, a little bit about how all this works. You know, when you create this. Uh, you should pop it up for this class. Working with a little bit of lag because I'm working across StreamYard. We can see that there's this I2C address. And then there's there are these um, steering channels and throttle channels. I learned a little bit about how that addressing works. And uh, when you have an I2C bus, which is just like the you know, a few of the every so many of the pins on this car are an I2C. But there are a few two I2C buses amongst these pins. And that's how you can talk to controllers like this servo controller I've got here. And uh, the basically, you've got your pin numbers that you have to talk to. But then in that in the Adafruit library, just expects those pin numbers to be right to be there. But then this board here, which is a PCA. Um, 9685 board. It just has certain address IDs it expects to talk to. And by default, it's this address 40, and this servo is address 40, and then this is address 41, 42, 43, 44, uh, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 4 A, B, C, D, E, and F. So it's in hexadecimal, all of it. But uh, essentially, You've got to have those addresses right. And so I kind of went through that debugging process and found out that my addresses were right. In the end, what I, and then I, this is my multiplexer. This takes a signal in from the Jetson and it takes a signal in from my radio. And basically, it will favor the radio. Um, and you can use it so that that way, if this thing's going off the rails, you can take take over. And take control and basically what's going on is with the with the multiplexer or the mux they call it but uh you've got this right here this pin in it's just a signal from the radio that says if it wants control or not basically and if there's no signal if there's a, no signal there then then these these are called the slave um, pins the sub pins and these sub pins will take control, whereas these primary pins will be in control if there is a signal. And so I just wasn't setting that signal right. 
And all you have to do on my particular radio is there's this channel three button right here and toggling that switches this um, multiplexer between uh, between controller mode and uh, Jetson mode. And so anyway, I just had to really just had to learn how it all works and got to do some debugging in the process and got my multimeter out. Where are you? Even got to break out the multimeter and detect if I was getting voltages, voltage signals, and I was, and did some things like uh, just hooked the uh, the servos directly to the servo controller, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. I, I don't know, I, if if people are interested, I could go through kind of a whole debugging process on the robot. It's it's like a whole new thing for me, right? Where I'm used to debugging code. But, I think that is so wild. I agree with Papa Chuck. It's so cool to see everything part by part, how it interacts. But let's see. I've been charging my battery for about 15 minutes. So let, let me ask you something. Up. So what is what oh. is the uh, – you can't you can't use it while it's charging? Like it's not getting po enough power to be able to use? Like you um, no, it. it's just like a remote control car battery. Let me grab it. This is the battery that runs the servo motors. I got you. Okay. And runs the car in the in the in the engine, and I just I just let it died on me. So I'm I'm wondering though, for testing purposes, uh, if you're doing a lot of testing, is it possible to adjust that uh, power source so that you can keep it plugged in without relying on the battery just for testing? Yeah, I think you ought to be able to. That's one thing that I would probably change about this build. Is I'm going to have a battery that powers the Jetson, and the, and the Jetson has two different voltage outputs. Um, this first pin here, and you can look at the pinout, you can find these what are called pinout diagrams that say what every pin does. But this red wire plugged into the Jetson board is a 3.3 volt output. And this green wire here is a five volt output from the from the Jetson board so you can use to power things. And uh, Five volt it will run the servos, so you can run the servos directly from the Jetson. That I'm sure about. I do not know if five volts would run the motor. Right, interesting. And, and so, so, in terms of parts, uh, I'm sure you went over this earlier many times, but just uh, for anyone who's new, including me, who forgot about how much money are, are the parts so far that you're working with? Uh, so I got a, a Jetson Orin, which is not necessary. You can go a little cheaper, but if you just get this car with the Jetson Nano, you'd be in about six hundred dollars. Got you. Okay, cool. And then, but with the Orin, it's a couple. It's about a thousand dollars. Got you. And then there's actually, yeah, that's that's well, that's where we're at. And what is and, and what what does the Orin get you? Uh, like for the extra, extra about eight times as powerful. Real yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. It's like a lot more. Good value. Everything. Yes, it's way better. It's like your. It's like a three ninety versus a forty ninety. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, a three ninety is it, great, but a forty ninety is, is like even more great. <laughs> for if you if you were just doing it for like um, the car, is it necessary? Does it does it make it better for training purposes? It just means. Um, Sorry, it, it didn't charge the battery enough. I can't show you the servos today. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll have to charge this battery, and we'll show it, we'll show it off next time. But I promise I can get the wheels to go. Um, but as far as what you can do, um, with it can just run larger AI models is the thing. Or you could say more AI models. It also has two camera inputs, which is cool. Um, yeah, so it's really... Uh, and if you look at the in the previous iteration, there is the Jetson Xavier, which was your lowest level kind of industrial grade uh, Jetson, and the Orin Nano is more powerful than the Xavier. Mm. And the Xavier is like two thousand bucks, and the and the Orin Nano is five hundred bucks. And so if you want to, so you can run industrial level stuff on this maybe consumer what's currently considered a consumer grade jetson that's one reason i got it because really 
with this series, we are demonstrating this pipeline of uh, from end to end, from designing a robot in CAD to having that robot deployed uh, in some kind of a, in working. And we're doing the Jet Racer because it's a fun and interesting project. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, I, you know, I know it's it's a couple hundred bucks. It's not cheap, but if you want to start a business with robotics, then I th I think that's a reasonable investment. That you you know. Oh yeah. Um, I was looking at the F one tenth car, which um, is really cool. It has a lidar. That build has a lidar and everything, but it's a four thousand dollar build, um, and that's with an Orin, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a much better way to start, and then you can. This is just, yeah, this is relatively. I was going for relatively inexpensive. Yeah, ah, did definitely. you go to sleep on me? We can we can pull it off. Yeah, the computer went to sleep. Wake up. We'll just remove it. We can't do much there for now, anyway. Need some and coffee. Yeah, so I'll I'll get that battery charged for next week, and uh, probably buy a spare. <laughs> Lesson learned. Uh, Keep it. Here. That's good. No, but I, I would be interested though, because I'm wondering, like, for people who do, you know, you're testing. Yeah. And you might not always want to, um, like, there might be a benefit to just having a plug um, to keep it powered, um, reduce yeah. the life cycles on the batteries, too. Yeah, and honestly, if I, I'll look into the voltage of this motor. If it's a 5-volt motor, then it would it would be nice to run it all off the, just the one battery, you know, I think. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely look into that. And, uh, but what you've got here is you've got this year... Um, Tamiya TT02 base, which is a very common um, remote control car kit. You've got a few 3D printed parts that you can download the STLs, or you can go to the Donkey Car Store and just they just make them. So that's what I ended up doing because I was having some trouble with my tolerances with my printer. And then you've got the Jetson itself is this big one with a fan. And then you have this uh, servo controller control board that actually drives this send signals um, from the Jetson through to the servos and the motors and stuff. And then uh, this multiplexer here is just lets you run two signals into the motors and lets you prioritize the, the remote control if you want and take control. That's it. It's really uh, pre a relative, pretty straightforward build, really. And all like they said, this is from Adafruit, this servo controller, and they have Python libraries for controlling this. Like if you look at the code to control it, <clears throat> it's pretty simple code. Like, uh, let me wake up this computer and share that screen again. Sorry, I'm working two keyboards at once. <clears throat> So we've got this Adafruit servo kit library. And then you just pick your addresses that you're working with. And you just create that, you know, you create a servo kit with it with you know, just address this servo control board this way. And then you've got you just hook up the two motors you want to control, the steering and the throttle. And from there you just can set them directly with just one line of code each. It's really pretty straightforward to use this Adafruit, Adafruit servo control board. And this servo control board, it can you know it has 16 servo channels, and and it can be daisy chained, and so it can control 16 times 16 motors. And that's a lot of motors. That's a that's that's a whole bunch, right? And I, I actually am curious if we can kind of like right now the um, the jet the Orin has two. Uh, kind of plugs, if you will, for cameras. But I wonder if we could hook more cameras up. You know, I, I have this idea of a an industrial robot that's not mobile. It's just a ca as some cameras pointing at inventory bins. Yeah, and uses AI to tell if they're that's great. If they have enough stuff. Was, you know, it's funny. I was going to ask you about cameras um, because they're pretty neat to actually have a, a safety feature on it to predict, to hit the brakes if it's about to hit something. Kind of like what yeah. your car does, right? So I, I think that'd be pretty interesting too, because these uh, you don't want your valuable investment to, to get broken by riding too fast into something. No, for sure. 
And and you could that's one reason that uh if you look at the higher end robots, they all have multiple sensors. They'll have a cameras, lidar, probably even just a distance, just a simple distance sensor could be nice, which is probably just right. a, a simple lidar sensor. Yeah, but I I like that um you know the idea of, of using these to monitor inventory and things like that. I think it'd be super valuable for people. Yeah. Um, because I guess right, it would, it would scan it would scan labels that are on um, packages or or um, storage bins. Yeah, or even just count. You know, if you had like a, you could train AI. If you had like a, a bin that was just had a pile of bolts in it, you could train an AI to estimate how many bolts are in a bin, just by looking at it. That's wild. That's great. You know, and I could I, use that. It wouldn't be a hundred percent, but I think with a bin bin of bolts, you don't need to be exact down to the exact number. You just got to be like, okay, is it time to order or not? And I, I think an AI could tell could be tell you that pretty easy. So we're just working on this pipeline from CAD to all the way to deployed robot, and uh, yeah. So let's talk. So let's talk about. Let's just review our pipeline, okay? We started with Onshape. Let me share my screen, my other screen. So we started with Onshape. And here we have the Jet Racer. Just a basic kind of a skeleton type of a model. Um, great question. He just rolled in. Is ROS2 used in it? I'm not using ROS2, but that's because we were going for the simplest architecture we could come up with. And you can certainly use ROS2 on a Jetson. And um, yeah. All right. So we have this on shape model. And what we did this time is we exported, like I came here, right click, and I, and I exported each sub assembly. To, to like an STL, or sorry, to a step file. I then imported those into Omniverse. And let's see here, let's open up that model. Probably don't have VPN going, knowing my, I don't. Let's just get a second here. I'm on the wrong keyboard. I have two keyboards and two mice here, so I can control the Jetson or the... <laughs> or the uh, my computer from the same spot. But let's see here. Did I open up? No. I'm so lost right now. So when too many screens going at once. Let's launch Isaac Sim. So I took those step files and then I imported them into Omniverse and put them into kind of a USD file I had set up. And I rigged those up with joints by hand. And here's a really great con comment is I saw there's even an on shape omniverse connector. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today because I had evaluated that connector a few months ago and I, it was really cool, but it wouldn't do spherical joints at the time. And that's something that we absolutely needed were spherical joints. Um, all right. And so we imported it into Onshape. We got it. We made the joints, including the joint drives. And uh, actually, let's just, you can see I've even got the steering model in here. And then uh, we spent some time rigging that, those physics up so that it would drive around well. And uh, from there, what did we do? From there, we took... We, there was a Jupyter Notebook that we already knew worked on the Orin Nano, the, not the Orin, the Jetson Nano. And we brought that into my computer. We hooked it up to Omniverse. Once we had that working, I hand deployed that to the Jetson Nano, to, to the my Orin Nano, tweaked it so it would work. Actually, it didn't need any changes to work between, between the uh, Jetson Nano versus the Orin Nano. I just had to figure out how to wire my board. And so we got it over there. We kind of tweaked it some more on that side, massaged it a bit because I had kind of messed with it on, on, on the Omniverse side. 
And that, which I haven't been able to demonstrate, but that will get, I can turn the wheels uh, with the same Jupyter notebook in either place. And that's our first, what I would call a vertical slice, right? We've gone completely from no car to running robot in Omniverse. We started with CAD, like nothing exists all the way to uh, this thing is working in real life. And it's just a hello world of each of those steps. They're all kind of rough. And so the next step is, so now let's talk about those steps and talk about how we can improve each of those steps and kind of talk about our next, you know, what we'll be doing next for this project. How does that sound? Cool. First, to Janisku's point, there is totally an on-shape connector. And we should use it. Actually, before that even, going back a step, um, I actually, we have, so with on-shape, they have their free license where everything is public and for non-commercial use. And I just wanted to let everyone know that I've switched to a commercial Onshape license. We just had a chat with them and we're still talking about, uh, I'm working with them and they're really easy to work with. I think there'll be some things we'll talk about soon uh, that I can't quite reveal yet. But in the meantime, they were like, this. they just have, yeah, they just were happy to give us a commercial. We have some commercial licenses, licenses already because they're partners. We use Isaac's team team works with Onshape a lot. And so I'm now on a commercial license. So, which makes it really straightforward because I'm on a commercial license. Any CAD that I want to release publicly for you guys to use commercially is just clearly within my license. So, uh, yeah. And so that's what, uh, so I've switched to a commercial Onshape license. And here we go. I've got to connect to the VPN real quick. That's wrong. Sorry. Getting there. Oh, wrong one. By the way, speaking of licenses and things, um, do you remember we had a viewer last week that was asking about the uh, Isaac Robotics course? Um, and and we noticed that there was a thirty dollar cost attached. I don't know if that is that viewer happened to be watching today. If so, I may have some news just for them. But let me see if they're here. Make yourself known if you were that viewer last week. I, I feel like the name was like Band Aid or something, something like that. Um, anyway, I may have a special treat for you if you're out there. Uh, just get in touch with me on Discord. Uh, my ID is Ed Mendy, E D M E N D I. You might lose me for a second there. Oh, I was going to no. say, you switched to VPN. Deep, deeply in stock there. Oh, there you go. You're me. back. I'm back. Am I back? Yeah, your voice stayed the whole time, but your video. Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. I was like, he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, is he the, is he here? I, I don't uh, see him. So tell us the news, though. I'm dying to hear it. Oh, so the news is so, uh, uh, you know, you had advertised a great uh, Isaac Robotics course introduction. Uh, we thought it was free. Um, and uh, it actually has a thirty dollars cost to it. So, since that user is not here today, if you are interested in taking this intro to Isaac's course that we have on DLI, get in touch with me because the team gave me a free pass uh, for one lucky person, um, and uh, we will. Uh, I'll send it. I'll give you more information via uh, Discord or email. Uh, you can email me edmar at nvidia.com or in Discord e d m e n d i. Um, wow. Yeah. So that's a good point. You know, if anyone comes across a DLI course that, you know, it looks really valuable to them and their work, uh, but you can't swing the cost of it for any reason at all, just get in touch with me. And we'll see if we can help. Awesome. That's so cool. That's so generous. Yeah. You know, big thanks to the DLI team for that. 
yeah, so here we have Isaac Sim open. You can see it, okay? This this is the one, the car that I made kind of from scratch here. And then kind of hooked up and did all the joints from scratch. And if I go to file, but what we'll, I think what we should do for this next iteration is if I go to file import from Onshape, It's, you know, it's not working for me quite right. Oh, no. Is it? Let me just do a search here. Yeah. Oh, I got to look up the jet racer. So um, I'll get it working. I have some trouble with the with the current version of Isaac Sim. But if I go on to, we have a pre-release version that I'm okay to show, then I'll use that to start importing the joints. It's, gonna, it's coming, coming out soon. So what we'll do is instead of doing all this hand rigging, we're just gonna import from uh, Onshape. And, what, and then from there, like this, so, and we're going to build off of that. So right now, a few of the steps are fragile. For example, uh, w when I use the Jupyter Notebook, I depend on an exact joint with an exact drive being there. But what we can do is we could have something that searches for joints with drives or searches for a drive with a certain name. You know, we can kind of make some of this more flexible. And I'll show you all how to do that as we go. And so that we can make this whole pipeline more robust. And we're... And from there, from that Jupyter Notebook, the next step is right now we just have this Hello World Jupyter Notebook that just talk, this moves the wheels back and forth. The next version is Chitoku Yatu has a, a Jupyter Notebook that he actually used for the car in real life. And so I think what we'll do is once we have that on shape pipeline working with the importer, uh, the next, and we have, we'll have the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we shouldn't have to rig any joints. We'll, we'll be rigging the joints in Onshape, which is cool. It's actually, I'd say, easier to do it in the CAD softwares than it is in Omniverse right now. So that's awesome. And But what we'll do is we'll make the Jupyter Notebook work with whatever's imported from there. And that way we should be able to just import any Ackerman robot with where we've named the joints well. Any Ackerman, so not just this one, but you've got and by Ackerman robot, I mean a robot with, you know, four wheels where the front wheels steer, right? That's the that's an Ackerman robot. And we're going to have a setup that will work for any Ackerman robot, not just for this specific jet racer. And that Python, that Python, uh, sorry, that, that Python, that Jupyter notebook will work for any Ackerman robot that is brought in from um, on shape. And so that way, if you want to do a different Ackerman robot than this one for your business, you totally can. And you could even use these, this Jupyter notebook and you could, if there's a, if you go to an industrial facility and you just draw a course with tape around the facility that that car is supposed to drive around, we can do that with our, uh, super, supervised learning. And so this will be a whole setup where you could design an Ackerman robot and get it driving around a facility and then with whatever sensors you need. And it'll use the camera sensor to, to drive around, but you could add a LiDAR sensor and collect data. You could add, I, I don't know, whatever you want. So it's a great start. And, uh, oh, and then another rough thing is when I, I took that Jupyter notebook and I had the files in one folder structure on my computer, I just grabbed them individually and deploy them individually over to the jet racer. And it was all done by hand through um, SFTP. And I think we're going to get a GitHub or a, like a Git workflow going where we work on the files on our computer. We commit to Git. We pop over to the, to the Jetson. We pull from Git and get all our files working. So I think we're just going to go through each step of this pipeline and improve it. There we go. That's the, that's what we're doing next. Good plan. Love it. So I think first, 
first of that, let's take a look at Onshape. And let's just get started right now. So I don't need Isaac Sim for a little while. Let's just go over to Onshape and just um, see if I go to NVIDIA. This is the Jet Racer folder. Let's just create a new document and just with a little joint. And let's just see if we can import that into Onshape with, with a driven join or something, okay? Let's just create, or actually, oh, well, that wasn't picking up. So yeah, we'll create a new one. We're gonna call it, um, oh, I don't need this keyboard anymore. Let me stash it. To make a little thing with two blocks with a little motor that makes it spin. So let's just do like a we'll do a sketch on this plane. And we'll do we'll dimension that rectangle. Make it like a 50 mil, 100 mil, why not? And 25 mil. There we go. It's a nice little start. Just making, you're going to make two blocks like this. And uh, let's let's add some let's add some fillets around the edges so it doesn't look quite so blocky. And uh, let's make the radius like yeah a little widget here. Fidget widget. I got to rename it right now. There we go. And then we're going to do like a, let's see here. Let's, can we just do a hole? We can. Hole type is clearance through all sketch points. Oh, we need a sketch point to do it. Let's do this way. Put a little hole here. Make it, um, oh dear. Give it a dimension. And we'll go ahead and uh, extrude that hole, but we're gonna do a remove. And so now we get a little hole there, right? Great. Now if we go to our assembly, we can insert, actually, just a second. I think here we're going to want to do this first. We're going to want to add a mate connector. Where's that one? Let's do it right here. Great. So now when we bring that in, insert this part, it, see it brings the part into our assembly and it's got a mate connector right there. So we can insert another one. They're sitting on top of each other, but let's uh, cylindrical mate. Actually, let's first just move it. I'm gonna delete this and insert it again. If we put it over here on the screen, it'll kinda go for us here. We can put it where we want. Now we can do a cylindrical mate between this one and this one. And we can flip it. And we can rotate it. Cool. And so now we've got these two things attached to that cylindrical joint. And I think we can 
Animate too. I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay, we can hit run. Oh, dear. <laughs> I I don't think that's physically possible. Oh, you know what's going on is we did a cylindrical. We need a revolute. A cylindrical would let it translate along the shaft and spin. A revolute only lets it spin. So, my bad. There we go. So now we have this like just a little spinning joint already built in our system in Fidget Widget. Uh, let's open up Isaac Sim and see how that imports now. I'm curious. Is it going to import it with its um, with the with the joint as well? It should, yeah. I don't know how to set up drives, and I'm you know got some things to learn. I feel we might need to set up the drives still. Oh, I don't know what those do. What what is the what 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 are drives? Yeah, great question. So if we want to control the joint, we need to add a drive to it that that lets us take control of a joint and move it. And so um, a motor. So a great great example in real life is the servo motor in real life has a drive, right? We can take control of that joint. Uh huh. Whereas the suspension linkages are not driven. We cannot just arbitrarily move the suspension, right? Okay, I've got Isaac Sim up. Let's just try this. Okay, we're authenticated. Right there. Assembly one, double click it. We can apply materials right here while we go. Um, wow. That's let's super go nice. them. And it calculates mass for us. That's great. Um, assembly viewer. I don't know how to apply this or if it just does it. I'm just going to close it. Yeah, it just does it automatically. So here's our fidget widget directly from CAD. I'm trying to use my uh, space mouse. And let's just see if there's a joint in there or not. Boom. There it is. So let's just uh, create a ground plane. Create a physics ground plane. I'm just curious if it's all set up, you know. Now, if we run, it's just got no res. Yeah, hey, look at that. Nice. So we did all that, and you know, we set that all up in on shape. Uh oh, we've invented a perpetual motion machine. So is it accelerating? It did accelerate, yeah. So we got, you know, we'll have some work to do once it comes in. But what we can do. Man, we'll, we'll have to think about this a little bit because, it, well, it, I, I'm just curious, you know, like this is a great opportunity for some extensions to be written or maybe USD. I, I was going to say we could write a sub layer that applies the changes to the joints, like add some friction to the joints, add strives to the joints with the right names, that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem with that is that it would always have to, they would always have to have the same path. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or else the, the sublayer thing won't work. And so I'm thinking maybe an extension would be in order that we could have an extension that just like the joint fixer, just like goes through and adds a tiny bit of friction to all your joints or some some amount you want and kind of, I, I wonder if we could write some, another great tool would be like a physics inspector, you know, like one that, goes through all of your meshes, displays all of them and what their mass is and kind of how they're set up in one thing. So you can kind of bulk select and go through and fix all your masses in one piece. And uh, I think some tools like that from the community would be great. 
and it wouldn't be too hard to write. So if you're looking for an opportunity to write your first extension and, and contribute to the community, reach out to me, please. I'm Strainflow on Discord, and I can give you an assignment to write one of these like little fix-it extensions um, for this project. And I think if we keep it general, like something that helps you inspect all your masses or set all your masses or something that just adds a little bit of friction to all of your spherical joints, that's a, a common problem. Then, um, yeah, I think it wouldn't be too hard to write. I think it'd be really helpful. And I hope some people will reach out to me about it. I don't have time to do all of those little, all of those projects. So I could definitely use some help there. Um, but yeah, this on sheep importer is pretty cool, isn't it? I just wonder, so like if we go, so now let's just talk about the drive thing. Um, so one thing I can do here is I can select this one. And I'm going to make it, uh, put it into kinematic mode right there. Now it won't move. So that one's stuck in space. But if I move this, it will move. So that's a handy, if you want to set something to be fixed to ground, that kinematic mode is really really helpful. Now let's add a drive to this thing, to this joint. We'll add physics angular drive. And right here's the drive. And we can do a target position or target velocity. Let's start out with the target position. We'll do 45 degrees. Now, if we run, nothing's going to happen. That's because if you set a target position, for whatever reason, you need to set a little bit of damping. Or do you? I'm, I get it backwards. There we go. So that went kind of slow, didn't it? Let's fiddle with it. Oh, so we want high stiffness and low damping, I think, for... Boom. Yeah, so for, so for target for target stiffness, for sorry, target position, we want um, kind of a low damping and a high stiffness. But they can't be zero or else things don't work right. Yeah, so just fiddling with those numbers a little bit. So I like that's a satisfying joint there. And we can run it here. And I can like change this. This is how I'm, and by the way, this is how I'm doing the server, the steering on the RC car. I've got an, a position driven um, joint drive on the little uh, servo motor joint. And then when the Python notebook says, give me a signal of 0 0.3, I'm converting that to like, uh, let's say this thing can go 45 degrees either way. Then I'm converting 0 0.3 to be, I don't know, about 15 degrees, right? About a third of the of the of the play. That, that's kind of rough. No, those are rough numbers, but I think I hope you get the idea. Yeah. So this is a position driven. Go back to zero. Now let's change it to uh, instead of target position. Let's do target velocity. And for this, we're going to want uh, high damping and low stiffness. For whatever reason, maybe. Let me just fiddle with these. I, I forget, you know. Let's do the high damping is ten. Nothing's working now. Come on. Okay, it moved a little bit. Here we go. Let's fiddle with this damping. If we lower the damping, does it go faster? Tiny. Oh, that broke it. What's the velocity? Degrees over time. Oh, it's like 100 degrees per second. So oh. that's actually about right, isn't it? 
It's kind of a silly unit, isn't it? But it's fascinating to watch. Yeah. So let's make it. Um, let's go and make it. Let's give it one hertz here. Three hundred sixty-five. One, two, three, four. Here we go. So there, there we got one, uh, one hertz. One revolution per second. Oh, sorry, 360. I did, three, I did 365. No, that's, <laughs> not, it's not days in the year. It's uh, degrees in a circle. So let's actually go down to one RPM. So 60 degrees per second would be one RPM. There you go. And if I let's just bump this, if I bump this damping up high, I don't know. I still have yet to kind of completely figure out the stiffness and damping numbers, like what exactly this. Yeah, they're both unitless, and I've got to figure out their exact physical meaning still for the position versus. I just know that they're kind of flipped for the uh, target position versus target velocity. And if we uh, let's if, let's if we stop this. This is kind of fun. If we take this part and turn off kinematic mode, I don't know if we've got any friction really. Let's make that thing really move. Let's see if we can get this thing to like get up. There you go. Now it's going to slide around a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nuts. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I wonder if we uh, take this whole thing and bring it up in the air. We're just, we're just having fun now. <laughs> oh, it fixed itself. It kind of righted itself. Nice fidget spinner. Fidget, <laughs> fidget, fidget yeah, it's, it's kind of a fidget spinner. There you go. There's our fidget widget, fidget spinner, walking oh. around. <laughs> so where is this going to go on the car in Omniverse? This is just I'm just demonstrating the on shape uh, importer. Is oh, all. okay. Yeah, so but it, it, it joint, with the joint drives work because there were some questions about that. I see. And so I think somebody who just wants to design something in on shape with joints, bring it in, simulate it with joint drives, that the last, you know, 20 minutes has got everything you need for that. Yeah. And it's just fun to watch. I, let's go again. <laughs> What we should do is make it out of, uh, let's see here. Oh, interesting. So now if you if you made edits in Onshape, do you have to re-import it in? You do. Okay. Yes. It's not, um, there's no live connection. That's a really good question. And that's why I mentioned before, I talked about having our Jupyter notebooks search for and find some joints by name because I think what we want to do in Onshape, this is Revolute 1. And here it comes in as Revolute underscore 1. And I think I, think I would key off of that. So, for example, um, I would start off in Onshape and if we just name this, like, rename it um, widget underscore drive. Then, so here we've got it. Now it's named widget underscore drive. When we import it, the joint will have that name. And if we come up with some kind of part number, some unique names for each of our joints, even if the structure changes, even if somebody designs a, a different fidget widget, as long as they name widget drive that same name, we can write some code that, like, even in our Jupyter Notebook, it can check, okay, does it have a drive? No. All right, if it doesn't have it, add it. 
And we can have that all be in our Jupyter notebook that checks for these missing things and fixes them as at, at, when it launches, right? And that way, anybody who designs any fidget widget, as long as it has a joint with that name, it'll it'll work. It shouldn't care like the rest of the structure. And I think we want the same kind of a thing for a car. We need a servo drive for the steering and we need a motor drive for for the wheels. And as long as we give those consistent naming, we can make sure that our Jupyter Notebook kind of fixes and handles the rest and cleans it up if needed. And that way, if one of you all does, needs to design a different Ackerman robot, if you use on shape, if you use consistent naming of joints, then it'll work. And even if you have an importer from a diff different CAT software, as long as it creates a joint with the right name, you're good to go with the rest of our with rest of our pipeline. Mm. That's that's what I'm thinking, is if we can kind of just say, like the minimum we can have to enforce, the better. And if we can just say, as long as you've got the right joints with the right names, you're good to go, then I think you could use whatever CAD system you want. You could just use Onshape very easily as long and create the joints in the CAD system and import them, that sort of thing. So, yeah. I just got to watch that fidget go. I, this is like my favorite. I love just watch that thing walking around. Honestly, I, I think I think you developed a hot product here for <laughs> local convenience stores everywhere for kids. What we got to do is uh, see if we can manufacture some of these and give them away at GTC Spring. Yeah, man. Mm. A little, a little. Maybe a little bling. We need a little light on there or something. A little LED. So, <laughs> there we go. If you have like a little thing inside of it to encapsulate it, you can. I don't. Uh, this is just really basic. I don't have. Well, this but like. If you made it like a pin in oh, yeah. the CAD model, you can just 3D print these out as is, and then they should Oh, spin. yeah. That's a good point. I wonder what – yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Um, that's That can be a good practice. If somebody wants to take this project on and actually complete this design so you have a, a manufacturable fidget widget, I, I will hap I'm going to happily release this uh, design publicly so anyone can make – Finish the fidget widget design. Oh, that's a good idea. Googly eyes. Now we're talking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just wish we could fit a Jetson on here. Teach it. Teach it to do something with AI, right? No, just. Kidding. Well, maybe you can integrate this into the into the car, so it's at the top. Just spinning, spinning around away, huh? like a little radar. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. That's the new, yeah, the new pipeline is with uh, with the Onshape importer. It works really, it's pretty slick. And I just got to figure out why it's not finding the Jet Racer assembly. But Maybe once we have that, save. we're going to rework that pipeline. Well, we'll rework the, uh, I mean, it won't be too hard, we're, but we'll add the steering and the um, drive joints to the jet racer. I think I'd also like to work on the dimensions a bit and make sure that the dimensions are a little closer to the real car. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, that said, next week I'm out. I will be out because I'll be in the wilderness. And the week after that, we'll all be at SIGGRAPH. Is anyone here going to, is anyone going to be at SIGGRAPH? If you're chat. going, definitely come reach out to us. We can yeah. uh, we can meet for a coffee or drink. You can uh, maybe attend one of the USD workshops that Eric and Jen and Ashley are hosting with Maddie. Um, the community will be there, as I said earlier. So we're happy to uh, – uh, not only happy, we'd love to meet you in, in real life. So get in touch with us if you're going to – even if you're not at Seagraph but you're in the L.A. area, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be right there downtown. Yeah, I'm still looking miss forward to my – what? what? Go ahead. No, no, Go ahead. no, no. You, you I was going to say, whatever you do, don't miss the keynote on August 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific. I know it's early for people in Pacific, but it's uh, it's going to be broadcast live online, so you can watch it anywhere. Um, and if you're in L.A., we totally would love for you to come and, and join us in the crowd. There, there should be some seats mm -hmm. left. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jen. What were you going to say? I am still looking forward to that Vermont coffee. It's coming. Actually, was this, you know what's funny? <laughs> 
I was just there at the, at the market yesterday, and I was like, hmm, I wonder which flavor uh, Jen would appreciate the most. I'm thinking about getting a couple of different ones so you can, unless you do have a favorite. Like, are you a, are you a French roast person? Are you uh, I have no preference. Okay. That makes it easy. So surprise, yeah, surprise her, I guess. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put together a little, and people coming to Seagraph, including you in the audience, if you're coming, maybe I'll have a little Vermont uh, little little gift bag. Oh, Vermont no. maple syrup. They have these little Vermont maple syrup things. That's that's what I'm talking about. All right, I, mean, I don't drink it. coffee, but See, the only challenge syrup. the only challenge with bringing liquids on a plane uh, is uh, is that you're bringing liquids on a plane. <laughs> so, well, I'll just put them in well, your check-in bag. Yeah. you don't don't. Bring in your carry-on. You know, so a little story in this closing minute. Uh, I have a friend who really loves uh, craft beer. And in Vermont, we have this great beer company uh, called uh, Hedy Topper. Anyway, so he asked if I could bring him some. Uh, and uh, you can imagine what happened in my luggage uh, to oh, my, no. my wife's dismay. Uh, things did not go as I, uh, I had planned in my head. Um, I, think, oh, I, think, I think one can may have survived out of the bunch I was trying to. Oh, right that's there. brutal. Yeah. Oh, that's but, a bunch uh, of ruined clothes. Well, okay. you know, you could say it, it does smell kind of nice if you like the smell of hops. <laughs> now my luggage has this nice hoppy, hoppy flavor to it. Oh, shit. But, uh, oh. Uh, rain, oh. Uh, all right. Well, another good uh, live stream is always a pleasure. And yes. I look forward to, uh, I think, next Next time we'll just we'll put out a bit on SIGGRAPH and we'll just uh, keep going on the pipeline. We're starting back with CAD, improving our CAD process and uh, work back through on a second iteration. Cool. Awesome. Hey, thanks for Thank joining you. everyone and we'll see you in a few weeks.